Hello students, myself Saurabh Palekar, Biology faculty from Jain View College. In today's practical, we'll be studying the external morphology of animals. So this practical has various, you will be studying various different specimens. So I have bifurcated this practical into three parts. So let us move on with the first part. The first specimen we will be studying is the amoeba. So this image of the amoeba, it's a microscopic view. And here the amoeba is without any staining. Here is what amoeba looks in a natural condition. Okay, so it is transparent in condition. Now, let us move on to the systematic position and characteristics. The systematic position, kingdom, protista, it belongs to phylum protozoa, class Sarcodina, and the type specimen is amoeba proteus. Okay, so amoeba is a genus name, proteus is a species name. Now, when the amoeba is being stained, okay, so if you observe the permanent slides, the amoeba looks like this. So this is what is a microscopic view of amoeba. Now let us move on to the characteristics of amoeba. So amoeba is a unicellular organism found in fresh water. The body is irregular covered by cell membrane. The cytoplasmic content, if you observe, it con consists of a nucleus. So this is a nucleus. Then it contains food vacuoles. So whatever food it has been engulfed, so those are forming the food vacuoles. And there is one more circular structure called as contractile vacuole. So the contractile vacuole, it helps in osmoregulation of the body okay, to maintain or to uh, liberate the excess of water content from the body. This contractile vacuoles are playing very important role. Next, it's locomotion. It starts producing the false feet. Okay, so the cytoplasmic content starts protruding forward, and uh, in this way, uh, it produces a false feet. So, hence the term pseudoporia. So, locomotion is by pseudoporia. Then it reproduces by fission. So, if it's sim simple fission in the sense, a binary fission mechanism. So, this completes the amoeba. Next specimen is hydra. So hydra, it's a, <coughs> uh, it belongs to a kingdom, Animalia, phylum, Cylentrata. Okay, Cylentrata because it has a uh, gastrovascular cavity inside. Okay, so a cavity is present, hence the term Cylentrata. Plus it also has certain special kind of cells called as stinging cells. Uh, that is also called as a nidoblast or nematocyte. So, these cells are present, which have a very peculiar characteristic, hence this phylum is also called as Nidaria. Then it belongs to class Hydrozoa and type specimen is Hydra. So we'll study the characteristics of the Hydra. The Hydra is a multicellular, diploblastic, radially symmetrical animal found in fresh water. Okay, so its body is elongated, so you can see its body has been elongated and cylindrical and its body is called as a polyp. The anterior end, that is the oral end, anterior oral end has 6 to 10 slender contractile tentacles. So you can observe these tentacles, the finger like projections which have been present, those are nothing but the tentacles. So they help in uh, grabbing its prey. Okay, so it has a very spe peculiar mechanism. So if you observe the cells, like these cells, so this is a tentacle view. So if you observe here, there are certain cells that are called as a nidoblast or also called as nematocyst. So these cells are again commonly called as a stinging cell. So they help in uh, paralyzing its prey. So if a small fish, lar larval fish or small cr crustaceans and all, if it comes nearby, so these tentacles, it uh, functions like a, as a whip, okay? And when it gives a stroke, the stinging cell, it help in paralyzing that particular prey and thereby these tentacles help in grabbing it and engulfing the particular prey. So the aboral end, so this is a oral end, aboral end is towards the opposite end. So this aboral end is flat and it is uh, called as basal disc. So it is 
uh, so that helps in attachment to of this particular entire body into towards a particular substratum so inside the body is enclosed uh, encloses a gastrovascular cavity so this gastrovascular cavity is called as cilentron where now its reproduction it reproduces both by asexual and sexual method asexual is commonly observed that is a budding wherein a small bud is been outgrowth a uh, small outgrowth called as bud is been formed it grows to a certain extent then it eventually gets pinched off and that young outgrowth leads a individual life so this is what a simple vegetative reproduction can be observed which is a asexual method <coughs> this uh, hydra is also hermaphrodite hermaphrodite means having both male and female gametes in a uh, one body itself okay so hence it can also undergo sexual reproduction okay so most commonly it is going undergoing reproduction by a sexual method so this completes your hydra part next moving on to the fasciola hepatica also called as a liver fluke so this is how liver fluke looks under the permanent slide so moving on to the systematic position the liver fluke it belongs to kingdom animalia phylum platyhelminthes the class trematoda type specimen is fasciola hepatica so the common name is liver fluke it belongs to phylum platyhelminthes because these are flat worms okay they are dors dorsoventrally flattened now moving on to the characteristics the liver fluke is multicellular triploblastic acellulomate animals that means they are without body zero the anterior part of the body is broader with a conical end with muscular oral sucker so this is the anterior end this will be the posterior end okay so the anterior end is going to have a muscular oral sucker which is conical shape the there is one more sucker on the ventral surface called as acetabulum okay so it's called as ventral sucker which is present on a ventral surface or ventral side uh it is called as acetabulum so that helps in attachment of this liver fluke towards the liver of any cattle or a human next there is a pore called as gonopore which is a genital opening okay which is located in front of this ventral sucker so, which is uh, located in front of this ventral sucker so the excre excretory pore is present at the tip of this posterior end so in this area we are going to find the excreted report so this is about the character simple morphology then as far as reproduction is concerned the liver flukes are bisexual or you can say hermaphrodite that is they have both the male and female gametes in a single organism <coughs> next moving on to the next specimen is ascaris lumbricoides these ascaris lumbricoids are also called as round worms because they are round in uh, shape so they are they are very much tapering pointed like structure but they are round body so we want to the systematic position so usually in the examination you will be kept the specimens will be kept for you uh, in a uh, what to say in a fixed tube okay in a in a specimen jar so moving on to the uh, uh, systematic position the it belongs to kingdom animalia phylum ascaelminthes class nematoda the type specimen is ascaris lumbricoides and common name is round worm so the characteristics ascaris is a multicellular animal its body is unsegmented elongated and cylindrical and is covered by syncytial membrane the mouth is situated at the anterior end and is surrounded by three lips so towards the anterior end the mouth is present with the three lips towards the excretory pore is present on the ventral surface slightly behind the anterior end so almost the excretory pore is present here okay just almost here it's not present towards enter deep region it's present almost here the posterior end has a anus 
The male ascaris is short and curved at the posterior end, having penal spicules. The female ascaris is the straight and long, longer than male ascaris. So, if you observe this female, the female is longer than the male, and the male is having a uh, curved uh, structure. Okay, towards the posterior end of the posterior end. Uh, so. You can easily bifurcate this. Hence, they exhibit the sexual dimorphism. So, next specimen is <coughs> earthworm. The scientific name is Peritima postuma. So, moving on to the systematic position, it belongs to phylum Annelida class, Oligopheta. Characteristics: the earthworm is a multicellular, triploblastic, eucylomate animal found in moist soil. The entire body of this earthworm is divided into more than 100 externally distinct uh, segments. Okay, and all these segments are of equal sizes, and these segments are called as metamers. So the mouth is situated ventrally in the first metameric uh, region, and it is called as a peristome. So the first segment where the mouth is situated, it is called as peristome. So, in this peristome region, there is a small trunk, tongue-like structure which is protruding out. So, it is called as a prostomium. Okay. So, the first segment will be called as peristomium. Next, the anus is situated at the tip of the last uh, metamere. Okay. So, the last segment is going to have a anus. So, almost in between uh, 14 to 16 segment. Okay. If you observe, there is a... Uh, these segments are a little bit swollen and it is very much distinct from other segments. So, this segment is called as a clitellum. So, it helps in usually help in uh, mucus production during time of sexual reproduction. So, these earthworms are hermaphrodite, that means they are bisexual, they have ability of uh, producing, they have both male and uh, female gametes within them. So, they, have, they can produce both the gametes. Now, the female genital apparatus or the female genital aper aperture is situated mid-ventrally in the uh, 14th segment while the male genital opening is present in the uh, ventrolaterally on the 18th segment. So, almost like towards the 14th segment and towards the 18th segment, we are going to find the female and male uh, reproductive structures. Then the locomotion in earthworm is by seating. So, which is ventrally present. The next specimen, the last specimen is nothing but uh, Hirudinaria granulosa, commonly called as leech. So, leech, the specimens, uh, the stored specimen, it, it looks like this. The leech is usually smaller in size, but as in then it uh, sucks the uh, blood, it increases to almost like 2 to 3 inches in uh, high size. So, it differs from one species to another. Moving on to the systematic position now. It belongs to kingdom Animalia, Phylum Anirida, class Hirudinaria. The type specimen is Hirudina, uh, Hirudinaria granulosa. So, the class is Hirudinia, type specimen is Hirudina, Hirudinaria granulosa and commonly called as leech. The characteristics it, the leech is a multicellular eucylomate found in fresh water or moist soil. So, the body is elongated and metamerically segmented. So, you find there are many segments which are equally uh, formed. Okay, Equal sized segments are formed. Uh, those are called as metamers. So, <coughs> it shows anterior sucker with mouth. So, this is the anterior sucker with mouth. Okay, And the posterior sucker with the Anus. So, the nu numerous closely arranged grooves or annula are present on its body surface. So, there are 33 body segments present. So, if you count the number of segments, you are going to find 33 body segments. So, these organisms are uh, what can say blood sucking organisms and a ectoparasite. Since they are blood sucking, they are also called as sanguivorous animals. Okay. So, they are usually the ectoparasites of uh, cattle and humans. <laughs>